Obviously, I'll leave all the reading up to you guys to do on your own as we just work through the chapter application. But I did want to make a note of the different file types, and it's I want you guys to make sure you read about the different file types and check out the table on F-1 for supporting those four main image types, uh, GIFs, JPEGs, PNG files, and SVG files, the most newest. Um, good information to know and working with the different image types. I just want you guys to be aware of that and uh, like I said, read that on your own. Learn all about resolution, dots per inch, or more prominently known as DPI, pixels, all that type of information. Just, you need to know that information, but for the video content we're just going to go over the actual work involved during the chapter. As we move into working with inserting images, just remember that the image element or IMG, IMG element must include two attributes the source attribute or the SRC attribute whose values is the path and file name of the image file to display and the ALT attribute which specifies text to display in case the image is you know, for some reason unavailable or it needs to be read in user agents by software such as screen readers that someone may be using for assistance. Here are the seven steps we'll be performing. The base steps will actually be more steps than just what you see on the screen because we will be repeating some of the steps. But those are the steps we're going to complete during this part of the tutorial. As you can see, we're going to be working with our data files that we've downloaded from the publisher's website. And we are working with unit F, data files, unit, and here are the files that we will be using. And as the first step says, we are going to open our HTMF1 file, which is an HTML file, from our folder. And we are going to edit that file, and then we're going to rename our files so that they are consistent with our files we've been using all along with our index.html file, our uh, rooms.html file, and our lakeland.css file. So let's go ahead and make those changes as needed and continue with doing our inserting images exercise. One thing I like to do, and this is just me, is I like to copy that file or that folder with the files that are embedded in it. And I like to make a separate folder for the week that we're working on. And then I'll, I'll paste that there. That way I have those files that I'm going to be manipulating separated from the files that were original from the publisher. And that's just a practice I like to do. You guys you know, will follow whatever method you like. But for me this works well in case I need to go back if I would have a file that I messed up and I wanted to you know, put in a new clean version of it then I've got it available instead of having to go back to the publisher's website and getting these files again. So just a little food for thought there I want to share with you guys. Uh, just my best practice for what works for me. Okay, so I'll go ahead and open the HTMF1 file as instructed. Let's open that with my notepad so I can edit it. Now that we have the document open in our text editor, let's go ahead and insert a blank line before the closing body tag. We're going to insert a paragraph element containing our first name, last name, and the text HTML5 unit F. After putting that information, let's save the file as our index.html file. Then we're going to repeat the same steps for our HTML2.html file, which will be at, renamed to rooms.html and then our CSS comment to add the same information to our HTMF3.CSS file which you will save as Lakeland.CSS files so that we have all of our files ready to work with here in Unit F. So I'll have that file saved, then I'll do the same process to the other files. So go ahead and do that on your own now. 
Always remember to change when you're in your text editor to all files so you can see all the files that you're going to be working with. All right, go ahead and make those file changes and we will proceed with inserting images. As you can see, I have all three of my files named as needed so that we can begin work. So for you guys are at this point too, uh, if you haven't finished that part, go ahead and finish that part now. Just pause the video and complete those and we'll move on to step two in our steps for inserting images. So next we are going to, in our index.html file, we're going to locate the h1 element. We're going to delete the text in between the h1 element that opens and the h1 that closes tags. And we're going to move the closing h1 tag to a separate line and at the same indent level. Then we're going to, in the blank line in between the two tags, we're going to put the image source tag in there and we're going to put all that line in to reference our lakeland.gif file as well as having the alternate text or the text in there lakeland reads bed and breakfast so let's go ahead and do that now so we've got our h1 element we're going to remove this information then we're going to move our h1 tag for closing it to the end. Get our lining there. Let's go ahead and add a line in between and add our new code. We've got that entered now. Now notice in here we put our width and height attributes. That's not required, but it's it's recommended so that uh, we use them to specify the native dimensions of the image itself. And that will ensure that the visual user agent is unable for any reason to display the reference image. It can maintain a corresponding amount of blank space, which will preserve the layout of your web page. Uh, just remember that width and height attributes are always going to be characterized by pixels. So now that we have our image element for the logo graphic, let's move on to step three. So we are going to go ahead and in our last paragraph element at the bottom of the page, containing the contact information, we're going to replace the first occurrence of our character code that we'd previously put in with our image code. So we're going to have some image elements replace those special characters. So we're going to go ahead and find that character code here. And we are going to replace it with our new line of code. Make sure that my spacing looks good. I also need to delete that semicolon. There we go. And we'll go to our next reference. There it is. Let's replace that with our new line. And that should complete that. Now that we have our image elements in place, let's go ahead and save our work and then return to the lakeland.css file in our text editor. All right, now that we switch to our lakeland.css file, let's go down to our h1 style rule. We'll find that real quick. Here's our h1 style rule. And it wants us to remove all name value pairs except for font size, and then to add the code for margin colon zero, which is already exists. So we'll just go ahead and delete everything else except for font size and the margin. Go. We've got everything aligned again. Now let's go ahead and save our work that we've completed here. Now here is what we started out with before we made our inserting image changes. Let's switch to refresh this and see what we now have. 
Hey guys, I just happened to notice if you go back to your index.html where we insert our image code here, we really need to, uh, and I missed this, need to delete some of this code. Some of this old code I just, when I inserted the new, I didn't, I forgot to take this out, so let's go ahead and delete that there. Okay, just wanted to make a note of that. Looks like I also forgot to take a little bit here at the end of our code for our logo graphic. a lot better. Now that we've uh, saved our work, I want to go ahead and refresh the page to see all the work that we just put in for inserting our image. I want to see that enforced. So I'll go ahead and hit my refresh now. And there are the changes we made in both the image and the minor images we made down here. Now that you verified that the steps were completed and enforced correctly as we were expecting, go ahead and the last step is to repeat our steps through to four to add the logo and the decorative graphics to the responding elements in the rooms.html file. Once you make those changes, go ahead and preview the page to make sure that they took effect. So in your rooms.html file, you should have went ahead and made the necessary changes to your H1 block of code. And at the bottom, as so, putting in that source code for going to our flourish.gif file to be applied. So you should go ahead and save your work and then open up your rooms.html file to make sure those changes took effect just like they did in our index.html. Before we made any changes, this is what our page looked like. See that this does not look like our index.html homepage we just did. Then after the changes, you can see our images as so. That's it for the first part. Let's go ahead and move on to the next section, which is your following around your text is called aligning images. We'll go on and move to those steps now. As you're following along in the text, we're on page 133 of your e-text, and we have another seven steps that we're going to be able to perform here these four and then as you click next on your next page we have our remaining steps with our last one being our saving the work and then refreshing our browser so let's get started on those steps shall we with our index.html file opened up we are going to scroll down to just below our main navbar element, the nav element where we close it, we're going to insert a new line and into indent to match the nav element to keep our indentation looking good so we have good clean code. Once we indent, we are going to go ahead and type our tag figure ID equal main, where main is in quotes. We're going to enter twice, then we're going to indent to match the opening tag. And then we're going to close our tag with our forward slash figure. Then we're going to delete the attribute pair value id equals main from the following p element. So we'll go ahead and do that now. There's the end of our main nav bar. We're going to end it and add our information. Okay. 
got that entered, let's go ahead and put our two blank lines in. And we will end that block of code. Then to complete that step, we'll go ahead and delete the attribute value pair, id main, from the next p element, which is right here. So we can go ahead and delete that. There we go. Okay, the next step we're going to go ahead and complete the code for our figure element. So we have some information here in between our tags. We'll go ahead and post those two lines of code. And our spacing looks good. So we have good clean looking code. And that will complete the figure element at this point. Since the image is decorative, there's no need for uh, substituting text for displaying here. Uh, so let's just go ahead and that's that's to explain why you'll see that we have an empty alt attribute and that's to indicate to the screen readers, hey, you can just go ahead and ignore this. It's just decorative. At this point, since we made that change, let's go ahead and save our index.html file. And let's go ahead and reload our web page in our browser. Okay, now that we have it there, let's go ahead and refresh our page. And lo and behold, you can see instantly the changes we that we put in effect. You'll notice that the browser displays our picture, the sun.jpg, aligned with the left side of the screen above the paragraph of our text. And this is because our web page elements are displayed sequ sequentially from top to bottom by default. And then we'll, uh, we'll work with moving that and get that aligned to the right here shortly. Now that we've confirmed our changes took effect, let's go ahead and return to our Lakeland.cascading style sheet in our text editor. So let's go ahead and complete step four here. So we're going to create a new style rule based on the figure selector. And just to make our, our uh, style rules easier to locate, they are grouped by selector type. So we are going to be doing the figure selector. So we're going to go ahead and put that block of code in between our body and our footer. So let's go ahead and insert that text now. Go ahead and create our space here. We'll enter our text. Our alignment looks good. Now you'll notice our float property, we have a value of right inside that. And that will just align the right edge of the image with the image edge of the parent element that's tied to. And you'll notice the change immediately when we save our work and then load into the browser and refresh our page. So let's go ahead and do that now. And you can see that the image moved to the right just as we expected. Let's move on to the next step. I'm going to complete our last couple steps here in aligning images. So let's go back to our rooms.html file in our text editor. Now that we're back to our rooms.html file, we're going to insert code for four figure elements. And those are shown in figure F6 in our e-text. We're going to place those beneath the H3 tag there, the header tag there for H3. So we're going to go ahead and put that code in. I know the code may be a little bit hard to read, so you might have to adjust your browser view to be able to see it a little bit more clearly, or maybe your screen has a, bit, a little bit better resolution. But that is the four figure elements to put in our four images for our rooms.html. So 
go ahead and type all that up into your text editor and then we'll save and apply that on our page and see the changes instantly. I'll go ahead and enter my line here. So I got underneath the H3 class. Put my code in. Go back up here and add some spacing for my alignment. Get that right underneath the H3 tag there. Everything looks good. Go ahead and save that. And we'll go back into my browser and look at my changes. Alright, you can see right now the page just looks kind of bland. Just some text with a little bit of style to it. And we're going to go ahead and refresh that and see our changes. Right, we'll scroll down through here and we see the images have definitely been applied and they have been applied to the right side of our text. So at this point, good job guys, and we will go ahead and move on to the next section. So in the next section, we're going to work with kind of our page flow. I mean, you can see that, yeah, we made some some good changes, but it doesn't really flow well. You can see how our images don't really line up great with the descriptions, the text that they're supposed to line up with. Everything's kind of off a little bit, and our just kind of like to make it look a little bit better. See how our address here is kind of like right next here and to the kind of all jumbled up. So we're going to work on that here in the next section, controlling page flow. So for controlling our page flow here, we've got simple six steps we're going to go through. You can see those there. And they'll conclude there, and you can see that we have what's going to happen, how our pages are going to look different. So let's go ahead and complete those steps now. So let's go back to our Lakeland Cascading Style Sheet in our text editor, and we'll complete those steps now. So now we're going to work with the clear property, and we're going to give it a value of right. And that'll prevent a floated element from being displayed to the right of the current element. Because our bed.jpg image is currently is being displayed to the right, this name value pair will move the contact information below the image. And you'll see that in figure F7 for when that new style sheet has been saved and then applied to our web page. Alright, let's go ahead and add the style rule for our footer element to give it the clear property. So we find our footer element here in our lakeland.css style sheet. Go to the end, our last style rule element that we put in there, or a property that we put in. And we add our clear property to our style rule for our footer element. Go ahead and save that. Now let's go ahead and reload our index.html in our browser. We'll go ahead and reload our page. Go ahead and do that now. And we scroll down and we see that our information has moved as we expected. So if your page looks the same, great job. Alright, we'll go to our next step, which is step five, which is we're going to insert a blank line before the closing right curly bracket for our top link style rule. Then we're going to indent two spaces and then we're going to put in the clear right property style again. Now that we're back in our style sheet, let's scroll on down to our top link style rule there we go. Let's go ahead and add our clear colon right clear property. Let's go ahead and add that at the bottom here. 
There we go, we'll hit save. Now that we've saved that, we'll go ahead and reload our rooms.html page in our browser. So we can see how that clear property causes the footer element to be displayed without our floated elements to the right, and how that gets applied to our page for the rooms as well. Click on rooms there. You see that looks a lot better. And we've got our bar moved down at the bottom here for our addresses. Everything definitely looks a lot better. So if your page looks like that, great job. And let's move on to our next section, which we will be inserting a background image to our page. In our inserting and background image section, we have six steps we're going to complete. They are on this page, which is page 138 in your e-text, and on page 139. Our last step, you can see in the figure how our page is going to look after we are done completing these steps. So let's go ahead and go back to our lakeland.css. We're also going to use the lake JPEG for this section and it is located in your images folder for the unit F that we're using currently. Now the text wants us to open up the lake.jpg in our browser. I, you don't have to do that, I'll show you here. I mean, tell that I've got it open. It's a local file. And you can see that the image is really long and it's not very wide. That's really all it wanted, wanted you to see. So we're going to go ahead and go to our lakeland.css file in our text editor, and we'll start using this image as a background. Now that we're back in our Lakeland Cascade style sheet, we're going to go ahead and find our body style rule, which we have here. And we're going to insert a blank line before the closing right curly bracket. So let's go ahead and insert a blank line before that. Then we're going to indent two spaces and we're going to type the background property code there. And the value for the background property always starts with the text URL. Uh, the relative path, if necessary, and the file name for the background image are enclosed in parentheses and either single or double space. I'm sorry, either single or double quotes, not spaces. So we'll go ahead and enter that information now. There you have it. Now we're going to enter another piece of code into our body style rule here. We're going to Go ahead and insert a blank line above the line that we just typed. Actually, before I do that, I forgot to put the semicolon there, so I'm going to put that. All right, now we'll go ahead and put a blank line above that. And we are going to enter our next line of code now. That will give us a background color. And we're going to specify a background color for user agents that don't display images or for situations where the background image file is just, for whatever reason, unavailable. And we're going to use our hashtag 6E93C8. And there, I did, I pasted the wrong one in there, sorry about that. There we go, that looks a lot better. And that should conclude everything for our body style. We now have our background color and image added using our background property. Let's go ahead and add some new style rules here. We are going to go beneath the closing right curly for the A colon active style rule, which is where I'm at here. And we are going to add the style rules from step five to change the colors for the skip nav section here. Because the background for the skip link is changing from a light to a dark, you change the text color to preserve some of the contrast 
that you'll be using. Let's go ahead and enter all that code. All right. And we have all of our skip nav code entered now. Let's go ahead and save. And we can reload our index.html in our browser. And when we do that, we should see that our background image appears as the background for our web pages. And the image is repeated from left to right to fill the entire width of our browser window. And the reason I mentioned that about repeating the image from left to right is because as you saw when we loaded the image into our browser it was very narrow so when we refresh this you'll see that that image gets duplicated across the screen to fill the entire width so I refresh my page you can see the image expands all the way across And we go click on other pages and we see that that image is there as well. Didn't mean to click that. We haven't worked with that yet. But we saw that our work that we just completed for inserting a background image worked. That's what we were looking for. All right, we're going to go ahead and move into the associated images with related text. And we are on pages 139 for our steps. You can see here, and then we'll be finishing up on page 142 as you're following along in your e-text. Let's go ahead and go back to our index.html file in our index editor, and we will work there. Okay, let's get to work with our fig caption element associates text with an image in a file. So let's go ahead and get our line of code for our figure caption. Go ahead and find that here. And we are working with we're going to do fig caption our text the sunroom and then we're going to close our tag with the forward slash fig caption. So we're going to insert a new line beneath the image tag for the file sun.jpg here. And we're going to indent the same number of spaces to keep our our code looking good. And then we are going to type our line of code. So let's go ahead and do that now. Sorry about that. I already had the line of code in there. So I went ahead and deleted it. Now I'll go ahead and we will work in this again. Go ahead enter put our line of code in there, our spacing is good. So now we have our line fig caption text which is the sunroom and then we've closed our our element tag there. So let's go ahead and save our work. Now we're going to return to our lakeland.css file in our text editor and we're going to add the name value pair to the figure style rule to set to text align to center. So let's go ahead and open that lakeland.css file. Now that we have our file open up, let's go to our figure block here. And let's go ahead and add that information to enhance our figure style rules. So let's go ahead and do our text align. There we go. Go ahead and save now that you have that entered. Now that we've added that element, we're going to go ahead and create a new style rule using the fig caption selector that gets the margin and the padding to zero. Then add the name value pair display colon block semicolon. We're going to save our work and we're going to refresh our index.html in our web browser and see our changes. So we'll go ahead and create our new style rule called fig caption. And 
and I should have entered a new line. There we go. And we've got our block to work in. We'll put our code in next. And we'll enter that information now. Our margin at zero, padding zero, and our display block, which allows us to change the behavior of an element from inline to block, or vice versa. We'll go ahead and save our change now, and we will go back to our index.html and refresh our page. And you can see our caption is there. That is associated with our text. And we'll go on to the next step here as we'll go back into our index.html and our text editor. All right, now that we're back in our index.html file, we're going to position the insertion point just before the word the, what we just created here. And we're going to type a new line of code, then we're going to position our for a ref href, and we're going to reference a place, and then we're going to position our insertion point just after the word room, and we're going to close that caption tag with our forward slash a. And what we're doing here is we're going to reference that room based on the the caption there. So because users who see the photo might want to know more about that room that's being shown on the picture there, we format the caption as a link to the description of the room on the rooms.html page that we've created. Once you complete this, uh, figure F12 in the text shows the completed code for our fig caption element. But we'll go ahead and put make that change now. Okay, you can see that I put this block in right before the word the, then after I put that in I came here to the end of room and finished out that block of code. So let's go ahead and save our work. Now that we've saved our work let's go back to our index.html page and let's go ahead and refresh that and verify that our sunroom section now opens once we click on that link we've created from the page. So let's go ahead and go there now. Go ahead and refresh. You can see we have an active link now. It's a good sign. I want to show you something here at the bottom of the page. As you see, as I hover over this link, the address for where that's going is listed there in the bottom left. So we'll go ahead and click that. And when we click on the link for the sunroom, it goes to, let me make an adjustment there, it goes to the sunroom. So let's go back, go ahead and click it again, and you can see the navigation takes us exactly where we want to go. Now that we've got our verification that our link is working, let's go ahead and return to our index.html file and our text set. Back in our index.html file, we're going to go ahead and go to the end of our quote here for our lakeland.gif. Let's go ahead and add a spacebar or press the spacebar. And then we are going to put in the word title equals, and then we're going to put a set of quotes in. Let's go ahead and do that now. There you have it. Now let's go ahead and save our work. And we're going to do the same thing with that title block there we just did. We're going to go ahead and put that same text in our rooms.html file for our logo and for the sun jpeg, read jpeg, tree jpeg, and garden jpeg. Then we're going to go ahead and after we do that we'll reload our rooms.html on our web browser and verify that no floating text appears when you move your mouse over those images. Let's go ahead and open up our rooms.html and complete those tasks. All right, guys, now that you have your rooms.html pulled up just like I do, go ahead and 
repeat that code for the image elements for the logo and the other four image elements in this page, the sun.jpg, read.jpg, tree.jpg, and garden.jpg. And go ahead, make that change on your own, save it, and reload your room's HTML to see the effects that you've just put in. Guys, before you go and make that change to your rooms.html, I just realized that I put that in the wrong place. Hopefully you didn't. Uh, but the, that block of code for the title there, let's take that out. Clean that space up. Let's go here after this quote, the last quote, like the instruction said, and put it there. There you go. Maybe you can see that there now. Now we're ready to switch over to rooms.html and put that code in. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'll scroll over here as I have my lakeland.gif. Put that at the end. And now I will go and do the other four image elements. Starting with sun.jpg. And then I did the read.jpg. Tree.jpg and then ended with garden jpeg. So if you got all that done, you should be ready to go ahead and save this and reload your rooms.html file. Go ahead and reload my page now. There we go. Now as we hover over an image, there is no longer any floating text that appears as we move our mouse over it. So now we know we did our section right, we can move on to our next portion of unit, which is our next to last part for this unit, and that is using images as links. This is a relatively brief section of the chapter here, or the unit, and we only have the following few steps that we're going to complete. So let's go ahead and open up our rooms.html and our text editor and get to work. Let's go ahead and position our insertion point before the beginning of the left part of our image tag here for lakeland.gif. And we'll enter the code from the book. And since we have an a href here, let's go to the end of our line. We're going to close that. That completes that part. So now that we've closed it, let's go ahead and return to lakeland.css in our text editor. And we're going to insert a new style rule using our image selector that sets the border value to zero. Just go ahead and save your work here before moving over. Now that we've saved it, go ahead and open your lakeland.css file. Now we, that we have our lakeland.css file opened up, let's insert a new style rule using the image selector that sets our border value to zero. And we're going to go ahead and place that down below. We're going to place that just below our h3. And go ahead and type in the code there, and it should look exactly like it does in figure F16 in the text. There we go, make sure our alignment is correct. There we go, we got that good. Let's go ahead and save. Now that we've saved our file, let's go ahead and refresh our rooms.html in our browser and click on the logo image at the top of the web page. Let's go ahead and refresh, so we refresh, and we are going to click on our logo. And you can see it takes us where we need to go. Now 
Looks like we got our work completed there. Good job, guys. One thing you'll notice, guys, is that when we're on their rooms page, this logo is an active link. If we go to our home page just by clicking that, you can see that our cursor did not change as this is not an active link. So we'll go back to rooms. You can see how our cursor is the hand symbol. Now it goes back to our arrow because we can't, there's no function that will occur by clicking on that. So let's move on to our last section of Unit F. And this last section, as I introduced earlier, is we're going to be inserting a favicon. And like I said, you've probably noticed before, you can see up here like Yahoo. Well, let me bring that down. There's a favicon here that shows, represents Yahoo. Ours is just a empty page. You know, the bookshelf has one, Blackboard has one. Now we're going to create one for our website. So let's move into that section now. As you can see, we are in the last section. Is there any favorite icon or favorite icon, however you want to call it. But we have our last steps here on pages 143 as you're following along in e-text and pages 145. So let's go ahead and go to our folder where we have our uh, H our files stored and we're going to make a copy of the HTML 4 ICO that came with the student files. So let's go switch to that. And you can see here's the file that we're going to make a copy of. So let's just go ahead and make the copy and we're going to change the name of it. The name they want us to change it to is favicon.ico. It's already got the extension embedded in it, so we don't need to actually add that into our name. Favicon, we've got it right there. Hit enter. Now we have our file copied and ready to go. Now let's go to our index.html file in our, ind in our text editor, and we're going to do the next steps in there. All right, let's go ahead and create our link element to associate with our favicon. And we will go ahead and insert a blank line beneath the link element for the second external style sheet, which is right here. Hit enter. Now let's go ahead and enter that code. After you enter four spaces, and then we're going to type that in. Now that we have that in there, that's the code for our link element inserted into our document. Now we're going to save this, and we're going to reload our index.html and see our change. Alright, up here is where we're going to see our favicon apply if we did it correct. So we're going to go ahead and refresh. And we'll see what's wrong. I'm just going to launch a new one at new session to see if that takes. Icons there now where it wasn't before, so it looks like I just need to open up a new page. So hopefully yours worked well. Uh, you'll note that in the book it says it doesn't always work that some browsers show favicons only for websites access over the internet. And they don't look for the icons for local files like we're doing. So uh, go ahead and repeat steps 3 through 4 to insert that into the lakeland.css in your style sheet. And then we will, after we go through the next few steps, we'll open up our index.html in our browser uh, from our published location to verify that the upload was successful after we put it on our web server. So I've got my rooms.html file open up here. Go ahead and insert my line after my second external style sheet. Paste the line of code there. File. Save. And then I'll switch to my lakeland.css in my text editor now that I've completed that step for rooms HTML. Now that I've got the Lakeland sheet open I'm going to save it and we're going to make a copy of it and we're going to rename it llprint.css and we're going to remove all the name value pairs that specify color as well as the pair that specifies the background image that we created earlier. And we're going to change all the colors and style rules based on pseudo classes to black, and then we're going to save our work in our new llprint.css file. 
So go ahead and create that copy now in whatever manner you want to do. I will usually do mine in File Explorer, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Go ahead and paste our new one, and we're going to give it our new name. Hit Enter, and now we have our other CSS sheet. Go ahead and open that up, and we can do those changes that it wants us to do with all of our value name value pairs. All right, guys. Once you open up your lloprint.css file and remove all your name value pairs that specify a color, as well as the pairs that specify the background image, and you change all your colors and your style rules based on your pseudo classes to black, and then you save it. It should look similar to mine. See there at the end how everything is black. That's it. Save your work, upload it, and see how it looks on the web. If all your work looks good, guys, that's a great week. Uh, good job on completing Unit F, and we'll pick this up next week and continue to build our skill set.